Petri. Here's a little camera shot. So, now I got my coffee going. Here's where we're at with the project. I still have yet to put that bar on. Hopefully that'll happen today. I got a lot of the wiring done. It's pretty much done, except for testing and kind of cleaning things up. I mean, here you can see I still have a lot of wire, just kind of bare. I need to get some wire loom. Uh, this is actually for the front LED, LED bar that's going to be in front of uh, the push bar and I have the side lights that are going to light up all the way out this direction we got a horn I have another LED strip that goes from here all the way over here and this is the old school style strip that has a lot of LEDs like these this thing will probably pull about 100 watts with just these strips I have so there's another strip that goes all the way underneath there as well. So when I have this lit up, it's it's just going to light up everything in the inside here. There's where all the wires are for the controller. So I've got everything kind of just temporarily um, put in with spades. I don't want to focus for now. And I will, once I know everything is in the correct spot, I'll go ahead and make the harness so I can just plug and unplug that. Everything is kind of run off that 10 amp fuse there as far as the DC to DC converter and the charger port because you're not going to be using them both at the same time. I don't know why you would. And that's where the battery is at. Everything is kind of sealed up and silicone down. All the connections like the positive and everything is nice and tidy. I have to put the top on, but I want to make sure everything is working correctly as I've I've already swapped out the BMSs a few times trying to get the other ones to work. These should be fine. They can do 80 amps continuous between the two, each of them. So that should be 160 amps continuous and they should be able to hit that 400 amp spikes. No problem. In the front here, I've got the main 60 volt gauge. It's going to be, you can see here, I have one that's kind of red. This goes to the pedal, and then this is everything else that goes to all the forward and reverse switch and the key switch and everything of that nature. So, there's the uh, clear Lexon case. I still gotta seal it up. I mean, it's not perfect, but it is functional. It's pretty cool looking. I do need to put something in the back here. Ow. To, uh, because it's just a big gaping hole in the back and you can just kind of reach in. So I need to find a way to block that off so that the stuff doesn't go back into there. And then it'll be a full complete compartment. There is another cover I got to make that goes in front of here. And we'll cover all that up. And let's see, what else do I got? Um, this piece right here, I still got to paint it because it hasn't been painted yet. I did move this back one slot to get that to kind of like be a little bit straighter. And it does have some fuses that were there from factory, but they're about 15 amps or so. And I've got lower amp fuses over here. So these should blow first and you shouldn't have to go to the ones over there. Now um, the other thing is, the reason I went with this pedal design, I didn't eliminate this pedal is because it does release the brake. So that's pretty much its only function, is there just to release the brake. All right, so in a few uh, seconds for you, I'll be showing you everything lighting up. For me, it's gonna be, yeah, it's gonna be a few hours.
All right, so here we are with the BMS app. Although I'm not feeling very confident because when I went into these parameter settings here, this is supposed to be an 80 amp continuous BMS, which should be able to handle, I would say 160, 180 amp spikes. So I figured it would be fine with this setup. But as I'm looking here, I was able to set the discharge, come on phone, discharge over current to 200 negative. But when I go here, hardware over current protection, why did that go down? I can only go to 100. My phone is having some serious issues here, sorry. So I took that, and I guess that, that means success in the bottom. I don't know how to read Chinese at all in my Mandarin or whatever, but that's what it says. Why is my phone having such issues? All right, so now to get it to turn on, since I don't have the wire to turn it on on the actual BMS, oops, not there. Back out. You got to go to function settings and hit switch function. So let's go ahead and turn this guy on and hope for some mad, no magic smoke. All right, so now discharge is on. So now I'm gonna go into here. AO is, that's that one, which is the rear pack. So I'm gonna refresh it. A4 is gonna be the next pack. All right, so I just merged the other pack. And as you can see, I'm it's actually charging about six amps. And what it's doing is trying to even it out because one is just a little bit higher than the other. And it's not even that much. Uh, 50, 57.5 on this one and 57.7 I think was. So you're only looking at like a 0 0.2 voltage difference. But you can see that 314 watts is actually um, going into the other pack so they can kind of balance out. So I'm going to let that do that for a second before I go and start testing. Um, right here I have the fuse. Once I put that fuse in there, I should be able to find voltage over there. Um, right now it is getting voltage right here. Um, and that's just everything going through um, the pre-charge resistor and going over because the solenoid has not been actually activated. And the BMS is everything is on. So this wire right here, I'm gonna have to put on a toggle switch um, so it doesn't just stay on at all times. That is actually coming right off the controller. Also, if you wanted to know which pack is actually on, you can actually see it light up when the Bluetooth is connected. All right, you can see I've jumped into the rear pack there. And that's where the juice is going. So it's at 3.4 amps now, about 194 watts. Trying to even out the packs. He's probably going to want to buy another one of these and have some spares. Hopefully it doesn't ever blow. Shouldn't. Let's go ahead and pop that guy in there. Oh. Scared me. Alright, let's try again. Alright, power's in. So, we've got 57.5 volts over there. Uh, let's see. None of the 12 volt system is on yet. Let's click the big red button. Woo! There we go. All right, so I got some lighting. So it looks like the brake lights are on because I haven't hooked it up yet. It's still just kind of down there. And let's go ahead and turn on a couple lights here. All right, that did nothing. 
Nothing. Hmm. Well, I also did nothing, so right away. Not very successful. Nope. Oh, there we go. Those are working. Oh, wait, this is the middle light bar, so that's not going to be on. This is the side lights. Pretty awesome. Um, LED lights. Oh, yeah, those are working. All right, so let me uh, figure out why the other ones aren't working. I think I found the problem. Eh, it probably works better plugged in. So let me plug that in and give it another shot. All right, so let's try this again. So apparently that one is just a halo. And of course it doesn't light anything up in the back at all. That's pretty much all that one switch will do. That one will actually turn everything, turn the actual lights on and the halo. And also it turns on the brake parking light. So that's working. This one's not hooked up yet. That one's working, it's hooked up. This is through the LEDs. You know, that's working. All right, so, so far, all that's working pretty good. Uh, let's uh, try out the forward and reverse. Ooh, look at that, eh? Click, click. Click, click, click. All right, so that's working pretty good. I guess the next step is to push the pedal. I need somebody to hold the camera for me. All right, so let's turn it. Turn the forward back on again. Now when I push this pedal, you can actually hear another click, which is the main solenoid. Bing. And now we should get some tire spin. Alright, nothing yet. Anything on the amps when I do that? Nothing. So, uh... Alright, after I... Got that eating lunch. Here it is. Time to try this again. So it discharge is on. You can see the 57.5 volts over there. Click it on. Now what I had done wrong is I had this hot wired. So this shouldn't click whenever you're doing just pushing the button. It only clicks that solenoid turns on whenever you push the pedal. Alright, so let's plug this guy in. Now, you've heard that, that is the main contactor. So now the main contactor is on, the uh, controller is now turned on. Now, hit the forward switch. Nothing happens. And it should click whenever I push this. There we go. Oh yeah. So let me go over here so you can actually see it spin. There's the wheel. Okay, so I got them backwards. So I need to flip around the forward and reverse contactor because I have them marked differently. Oh, and I just popped the fuse. Looks like we're good though. All right, so I blew a 15 amp fuse, goosing it, being stupid, because I just got this little tiny wire, I even got it just rigged up on that, not even, but that's enough for testing because it's just, it's just free spinning. It's just off the wheel or <clears throat> just spinning the wheel. It's not actually on the ground at all. All right, so forward, clicked in, push forward. Solenoid opens, and we're going forward. So you can see how little 
power actually needs just to spin the wheel. That is forward. <clears throat> Neutral. Reverse. Alright, so I'll do one more video on this guy, which will be the video of it completed and driving. I'll show you how fast I can get it up to, and hopefully these BMSs can handle it. If not, looks like I'm about to order some other BMSs.